Hello, everyone. Hello from sunny Lisbon. I'm Alex. I'm your local friend and your local guide for today online experience. So this new project from KLM and with locals, uh, we decided to ask which city you want to explore virtually together today, this amazing sunny day. And you were choosing between Barcelona and Lisbon and you decided you voted for Lisbon. Okay, so perfect. We are here uh, in the central part of Lisbon and we're going to explore together today for around 15, 20 minutes. And uh, this will be a very interactive uh, event uh, and we will be able uh, to communicate. You will be able to ask questions and you will be able to help me to choose the, di the direction where to go and what to explore. So I'm happy to announce and to present my friend. Uh, the person who is going to help me today is Donovan. Uh, he's a flight attendant from KLM. Uh, so uh, say hello, Donovan. Uh, uh, are you in Amsterdam right now, right? Yes, Alex. Hello and good afternoon, um, all viewers. I am Donovan and I'm sitting live at KLM's headquarters and I'm going to read all your comments and uh, pass them on to Alex during this interactive tour. We are very excited about this. I hope uh, you all are too. And uh, Alex, I'm looking forward to your uh, tour of Lisbon. I'm super excited too. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be coming to you during the experience. We'll be asking you uh, the feedback from our followers. And uh, uh, I, I hope the weather is good there because the weather here in Lisbon is fantastic. It's super warm. It's like 30 degrees Celsius, a little bit of wind, but perfect. How's it there in Amsterdam? Well, I see it over there in uh, Lisbon. It's indeed perfect. And as we speak, the sun is coming a little bit here in Amsterdam after days and days of rain. So I think you brought a little bit of Portuguese sun right to Amsterdam. Thank you for that. Perfect, perfect, great. So um, while we're starting, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, our followers, where are you from? From which countries are you watching our live stream? And have you ever been to Lisbon before or it's your first experience exploring the city? Write down in the chat and then uh, Donnie is going to help me uh, to see uh, if you've already been here or not. In the meanwhile, while you're writing down, I, I would like to say that yesterday we announced uh, on KLM page uh, two locations. We asked you, where do you want to start? And uh, a lot of people um, decided, asked me to start in the Praça do Comércio. Praça do Comércio, which means the commercial square. And actually, I'm here right now in this beautiful square, which is behind me. I'm going to start from this square and I'm going to show you around and tell you some stories, legends, interesting facts. We will speak today about food, drinks, and all this in just 15, 20 minutes. So a short introduction of Lisbon for you, a small teaser. So let's begin then. Let's start with this um, beautiful. Let me show you around. So this is the commercial square. It's a little bit windy here. Uh, well, why is it windy? Because we are here by the water. I don't know if you can see there in the distance, we have this river called Tagus River. Well, some people think that Lisbon is located by the ocean. In reality, there is 30 minutes to drive towards the ocean yet. And um, Lisbon, well, it's a small city. You know, it's the capital of our beautiful country, Portugal. It has only 600,000 people living here in Lisbon. It's not that big. And in the central part, of course, the greater Lisbon is much bigger. So why are we starting here in this beautiful square called the commercial square? First of all, because it's the center, the heart of the city. That's where all the main events of Lisbon are going on. That's where we watch World Cup, European Cup. That's where we uh, celebrate uh, Christmas, Christmas lights, New Year, uh, fireworks. Everything is going on here on this square. You see how big it is. Here we also have this beautiful statue dedicated to our King Don Jose, the first one. 
he was the the king in 18th century here in Portugal. You know why this square is called the commercial square? Well, there is a, an explanation because in uh, since 16th century actually, Portugal was one of the most powerful empires. We had a lot of connections with Brazil, with India, with Macau in uh, in China, Indonesia, lots of uh, different countries in Africa. So, of course, a lot of trading was going on, and all these boats with different goods were coming to this uh, to Lisbon here from from the river and bringing all these goods to this square, and the trading was going on here in this square. That's why the name, the commercial square. Actually, let me show you again. Oh, no. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, sorry, some technical issues. Okay, so I'm back. I'm, I'm showing you myself. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, I wanted to show you the statue again. Okay, so this is the statue of the king, of King Jose. And he had this palace here on the main square, on the commercial square. The palace doesn't exist here anymore because, uh, well, it was destroyed by this huge earthquake which we had in Lisbon in 18th century. So uh, what we have here right now is this beautiful arch a huge arch called the triumph arch what happened why this square was a bit different than that uh, 18th century why we had this uh huge palace here but now we don't have anything we just have this beautiful arch it's because we had the in 1755 the earthquake which which happened here in uh, 1755. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to continue the the live stream. Uh, this is the uh, earthquake which happened in 1755, and it destroyed half of the city. Can you imagine? It was so strong, which uh, basically demolished almost everything. And that gentleman on the statue. On the on the arch, you can see was Marques de Pombal. He was our prime minister, who redesigned, who reconstructed all the city after that huge earthquake. And we're actually going right now to this uh, uh, street, to the main street of Lisbon, to the most historical part of Lisbon, that part which was affected more the most by the earthquake. By the way, before we continue. To the to this part of the city i would like to ask you one question um let me see again where are you can you see me okay. ask you one question next in a few minutes we're going to speak about uh, some traditional portuguese food which is, uh, or pastel de nata, the, so, the sweet pastry from uh, Lisbon, the most traditional pastry, or a salty pastéis de bacalhau. It's a cod fish. So I would like you to participate and I would like you to choose from um, these two options and to tell to Donovan uh, to write down your option. What do you would like to to listen and to explore more. The pastel de uh, bacalhau, the salty codfish, or pastel, pastel de nata, the sweet dessert. Write down, uh, Donovan, uh, are you here? Are you following the... Yes, I can hear you and I can uh, see you. The comments are coming in and um, I'll check uh, them for you. And in a few minutes, when you're ready to talk about it, I will give you an answer. Okay, perfect. So we are uh, then continuing walking in Lisbon and uh, in a few minutes we will see the answer what people choose to to eat today, salty or sweet. Okay, let's continue. Uh, here we have 
we're passing by this this beautiful arch which is there on the top some street musicians playing and we are getting to this uh, main street of lisbon called rua gusta which is a fantastic street uh, very wide and this area uh, was destroyed unfortunately by the earthquake and uh, was rebuilt by Marques de Pombal at that time and uh, this this big street didn't exist at the time the streets were much more narrow and and this arch of course didn't exist like I said before this beautiful arch I have to I have to tell you that um, before uh, this street right now it's a pedestrian street right before that was where were lots of cars and the tram was passing by here uh like we like we see it right now here uh, there are some cars um these buildings which you can see they're all the same kind of shape the same design that's what uh, marques de pombal our prime minister used in this uh, baixa area uh, to rebuild the city uh, they used the new technologies new seismic technologies so if the earthquake happens again uh, this building survived and they're actually very strong and they they can survive any kind of earthquake um this area called baixa which means in portuguese the downtown the lower part because on the right side here if you look to the right you will see far away uh, one hill called alfama and on the left side, you will see another hill called Bairu Alto. So these two areas, they are uh, two hills, and this area is kind of lower part. So that's why this part was destroyed more than others. Like I said, this area, this street, this particular street was with cars. Cars were coming through that arch and going up to the end of the street to the right. Uh, and also we had here this famous first tram in uh, Europe at that time called with the number 28. This tram still exists, not on this street. They put it the different uh, tram line. Uh, we're going to see it right now here. Oh, maybe we will see some trams uh, coming. Not right now yet, but they will come soon for sure. Uh, here, uh, this tram comes through the entire historical part of the city. And I, I really recommend you to, to take one of those and explore. And this area, Baixa area, which was rebuilt after the earthquake, is full of this kind of small, uh, very authentic local shops. Uh, because this area was a kind of commercial area after the earthquake. Uh, that's where the trading was going on inside of the shops. And these shops, they have this kind of uh, sign, small sign saying, Loja com história, which means the the store with history uh, which is uh, basically means that these old shops like for clothing and, and stuff like this they have more than 100 years of history they belong to the same owner and they pr they keep producing the same kind of uh, materials uh, as you can see down there uh, this is like clothing shop and there are plenty of them but this kind of very authentic and the local shops so let's continue walking on the street Let's go to another uh, small, tiny, narrow street uh, of Baixa. We see these uh, buildings almost touching each other on the top. So, Donovan, um, how's it going there with the questions? Are any people voting for Pashtal uh, yes, Dinata? We have a lot of votes. And uh, it must be my lucky day because I have a big, big sweet tooth. And we would like to hear something more about uh, Pastel de Nata, if possible. Okay, of course. Pastel de Nata is my favorite thing. We will arrive there right now. And we will try in one of the local pastry shops, like local bakeries, uh, the most traditional pastry of Lisbon. Actually, you can see also on the on the flooring this uh, calçada portuguesa. That's how we call our pavement of the streets. You can see them everywhere. They're very famous. You can find them not only in Lisbon, uh, but also in Brazil, in Macau, in India. 
they are very slippery though in the summer or in the in the winter sorry when it rains a bit uh so be careful using uh high heels also so that's how baisha area looks like it's still full of different shops restaurants uh some local pastries we are going to one of those i'm going to wear the mask give me just a second and i will uh, buy one of those pastries which i'm going to show to you right now like this here this is called pastel de nata okay let's try to order one of those let's get to one of the small shops okay what are the atmosphere pastel de nata okay let me wear the mask here while i'm ordering pastel de nata i hope you're still going to hear me okay so um pastel de nata por favor in order to speak about pastel de nata we need to buy them first right okay let me see okay here we're getting one so pastel de nata is basically uh, uh so but basically pastel de nata is something like this okay so we're going to put it here let me see okay here the pastel de nata and of course we have to eat pastel de nata with cinnamon with cinnamon and without cinnamon is two different things uh what is pastel de nata pastel de nata is quite a simple thing it's an egg tart with uh, custard and uh, sugar that's it simple nothing nothing special right but it's so delicious you can't imagine how good it is and it the it dates back the history dates back to uh 16th century when monks started baking those pastries in the monastery and then uh past like 300 years after imagine it's still it's still very popular it's not very popular it's the most popular uh dessert in portugal and it's uh the most delicious desserts in the entire europe so it's kind of very good and i'm going to try it for you if you already been to lisbon you probably tried many of them remember that uh, pastel de nata with cinnamon with cinnamon and without cinnamon is two different things I, and i really recommend you to try it warm when it's freshly baked there are a few bakeries here one of those is this one where you can get those ones really good and freshly prepared mm. cheers donovan we have uh, another question um, for people while i'm enjoying some um, some pastel de nata let's ask people what what they would like to explore next uh do do they want to uh speak well of course after eating some sweets we need to drink something right Obviously. do our followers want to drink some green wine or speak about some green wine or about port wine Let's ask uh, our followers and that when once we get the reply, I'm going to explain you difference between those ones. I'll check the comments for Cheers. you, Alex. Thank you. So while, while we're waiting, I'm going to walk a bit more, exploring and showing you this, uh, this beautiful area of Alfama. Rega just finishing eating the pastel de nata, I, I have to tell you, there is a, the most famous one called Pastéis de Belém. Pastéis de Belém, they're located in the area in Belém. That's where they have this kind of secret recipe from the monks from 16th century, which they don't tell to anyone. So if you want to try the original ones, the special ones, go there to that area. It's uh, not too far from the historical center, but still you need, you need to get there. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's walk a bit more here some other streets let's explore while we, we're getting some results from people about port or green wine imagine we have a green wine in, in Lisbon and we have of course famous port so we will see what people are going to choose 
as you can see. Yes. Uh, Donovan, do you think we already have some answers or not yet? I just got some results back and it's going to be the port. And can I just say, I've been to Lisbon quite a few times. I've eaten many, many uh, pastel de natas, but never with cinnamon. So I think I just have to come back when it's safe again. Oh, never with cinnamon. Never. Oh, no. It's so different with cinnamon and without cinnamon, you know? <laughs> I'm going to try next time I'm there. Yes, please. I am waiting for you. Okay, so let's put the camera here. I'm going. Okay, perfect. So I'm back. Okay, like this. So people voted to speak about port wine. Well, I'm not surprised. Port wine is quite famous, right? We are from Portugal, and port wine is also from Portugal. Well, you could you could choose to speak about green wine. You know, I brought some green wine, but not port wine. Okay, we'll speak about green wine next time. You can ask me all these questions. Uh, text me later after the experience on with locals platforms. I will be more than happy to reply. But today we're speaking about port wine. You see, it says vinho do Porto. Well, what does it mean? Uh, actually, it's produced not in Lisbon. Some people think it's ah, it's from Lisbon. No, it's from Porto. That's why it's called port wine. And Porto, it's a small city in the north of Portugal. And there is a Douro Valley. That's where these grapes grow in the on the hills along this um, Douro, uh, Douro River. There are three different types of ports. Tony ruby and white port so basically uh different grapes different uh, slightly different process but uh, the idea is that this wine is sweet this wine is strong it has 23 to 22 percent of alcohol so what does it mean it means that uh, this um, wine is a uh, kind of digestive we don't drink this wine as a normal wine we drink it after dinner after lunch after a good meal to help to digest that food we just ate and also it's sweet so of course we drink this wine as a as a dessert wine you know after after dinner so it's a combination of two things we love port wine we don't drink it as a normal wine we drink it a little bit just a little bit uh, sometimes it we eat it with uh, we drink it with pastel de nata um donovan have we ever tried port wine before this I have tried and I love it, I must say. I never knew you should only drink just a little bit, um, but that's a good uh, good thing to know. Yes. Uh, well, you know what? The normal bottle of port wine like this, you can buy it, you can find it everywhere in every shop. It's actually very cheap here in Portugal. It costs around uh, four to five euros. Imagine, so cheap. And it's actually a very good quality, but you can find some unique port wine, some old port wine. And port, old port wine is actually very good because it has 23% of alcohol. After even 100 years, nothing will happen to port. So I strongly recommend you to try different ones. Okay, so do All we right. have uh, maybe some more questions from people? Because I think we're already slowly finishing our experience. Yes, indeed. And can I just say, I'm not sure which I um, am most happy about, your energy, the good weather there, or the delicious foods and drinks, because it all looks so amazing. Thank you for that. And if you have some time for questions, we have some questions from the viewers. Yes, I have a lot of time. Any questions, please. But right. uh, maybe some main ones, the most important. Yeah. Can, uh... The most important question we would like to ask you is how is the feeling in the city at this moment during the crisis with the COVID? Is it um, noticeable? Uh, well, you can see on the streets of Lisbon uh, in the commercial square, it's quite quite empty. You know, you cannot really compare it uh, with, uh, with what was here one year ago. It's quite empty, there are not too many tourists. There are some, just a few. Uh, we have to use masks, as you can see, almost everywhere. We have to clean our hands. 
but uh, you know, it's it's getting better. Uh, I hope very soon we will be able to start traveling again. And uh, well, I hope uh, to see you soon um, also in Lisbon. You know, it's it should it should be fine one day, one day soon. Um, let's yeah. let's hope so indeed. And uh, can we do one more question? And of I course. promise, I, I, it's not my own, but where do locals eat in Lisbon? What's your like favorite restaurant, favorite place to go? Well, there are many of them. Uh, here in the, in the central part of Lisbon, you see lots of restaurants, right? Um, I can recommend you going here, exploring this Baixa area, eating here, but there is a specific area which I like so much. It's called Alfama. In Alfama, there are a lot of kind of authentic local small restaurants which uh, i can definitely recommend you a few of them if you text me later uh, uh, i can definitely tell you what you should try to eat here it's our codfish called bacalhau or uh, octopus you know the best octopus is in lisbon is in portugal it's so soft so delicious it's with the olive oil with potatoes so definitely explore uh, local restaurants in alfama and baixa and try try that seafood all right thank you for that well i for sure cannot wait to go back to lisbon and um thank you so much for your for your enthusiastic tour and your passion it's really it's really nice and um well on behalf of the whole klm team thank you so much for this tour and when i'm in lisbon i'll make sure to uh, give you a call so we can drink a port together and eat a pastel de nata with cinnamon this time Oh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I, ha I hope I made uh, uh, you to feel Lisbon a little bit, to see if you've never been before to Lisbon. So really hope this all will be over soon and you will be able to visit us and explore together. I can do a be beautiful tour for you. Uh, and um, yeah, of course, thank you for KLM and uh, with Locals for letting me to join this project and to be the first one to start. Thank you very much for, the for this hours. Weekend. Goodbye, Alex. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye.